Welcome to Next, Google Cloud Next 2018. Talking to CIOs, they also tell me that they now realize they're going to be shutting down their data centers. Security is a number one worry, and AI is a no the number one opportunity. Google Cloud security starts with the Titan chip that does um, a, 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 in every server and every Chromebook, it checks the boot. By default, everything stored and in transit is encrypted, and you can use Google's keys or you can use your own keys to do the encryption. Google's a leader in open source. We have over 2,000 open source projects. We've released millions of lines of code under open source licenses, examples being TensorFlow and Kubernetes. Kubernetes is one of the fastest moving projects in the history of open source. In gaming and media, I just want to mention that we, Unity, the leading 3D game and design developer platform, is moving from AWS to Google Cloud. It's great to be here at uh, Cloud Next with all of you and all these enormous cubes. <laughs> Diane told me Google's containers were getting bigger. I had no idea just how big. It's probably the only place I can tell a container joke. We all know that cloud gives you unprecedented reliability, flexibility, scalability, performance. Cloud computing is still missing something. A simple way to combine the cloud with your existing on-premise infrastructure or with other clouds. Eight out of 10 enterprises today have a multi-cloud strategy. The move to software containers has helped some in simplifying and speeding up how we package and deliver software. The containers wrap an application and all the things it needs and allow it to run across many different environments. Uh, in fact, Google put uh, containers into Linux uh, over a decade ago. And as Sonar mentioned, four years ago, we released uh, Kubernetes, the open source, better way to organize this universe of containers and, and microservices. And today, it's by far the most popular way to run and manage containers. I'm very excited to introduce Istio, another Google-developed open source product. And Istio extends Kubernetes into these higher-level services and makes service-to-service -service communication secure and reliable in a way that's very easy on developers. So you can discover, connect, monitor services holistically across multiple locations, and you can still manage and monitor them all from a single place. And I'm very happy to announce that as of this week, Istio will go 1.0 and is ready for production use. So today, I'm very happy to announce that service, Cloud Services Platform, which is a fully managed service platform that puts all of your cloud management of Kubernetes and Istio in one place and is created and supported by the same teams that write Kubernetes and Istio. To see how Cloud Services Platform helps me as a developer or operator, let's take a look at a typical retail app. So we deploy this app on GKE our managed Kubernetes service, you'll notice that it's deployed across two clusters for redundancy, one in the east and one in the west. So I deployed Istio into both of these clusters, and immediately I start seeing interesting data for the services. And to see that, we'll turn to Stackdriver and use the new service management features that light up automatically once you've installed Istio. What you're seeing here is the new service topology graph in Stackdriver. The circles represent my services, and the lines are the dependencies between those services. If I hover over the line, I can see which services are communicating with each other. This app was deployed across two GKE clusters, one in the east and one in the west. But the one thing I didn't tell you is that the second GKE cluster isn't actually running on Google Cloud Platform. This cluster is running on a vSphere rack right here on stage. <laughs> Today, I am very excited to announce GKE on-prem a managed Kubernetes offering that runs inside your data center. With GKE on-prem, you get the GKE experience directly in your environment. The Cloud Services platform will be available in alpha this fall, and it will include all the features you've seen today, including on-premise GKE, Istio, uh, observability, and centralized policy enforcement. So what's G Suite? These applications have over 1.4 billion monthly active users. For G Suite customers that have deployed our security keys, 
to date, we have a grand total of zero account hijackings. Now that is security nirvana. Today, I'm announcing a critical new dimension to the security center. It's the G Suite investigation tool. So what does that do? It lets an admin investigate an unusually large amount of file transfer outside the domain, revoke access, zap malicious emails, and all of this from one simple single console. Investigation tool goes into beta today. G Suite data regions will allow the primary data for key G Suite apps to be resident at the customer's demand in Europe or in the United States. And best of all, this is dynamic, meaning if a user moves or if a file's ownership changes, the files move seamlessly underneath the covers with no impact on the availability of the files. Data regions for G Suite is generally available to all G Suite customers today. Millions of people of the world use the Google Assistant to get more done every single day. And we are committed to bringing that same magical assistance to the workplace. With Google Sheets, you just ask your question in natural language. For instance, you can ask, give me the top sales, uh, top stores by sales for the last week, and out pops the answer. That is content consumption reimagined. Over 10% of Gmail replies are these machine-written smart replies. We're bringing Hangouts chat, uh, smart reply to Hangouts chat in the coming weeks. The responses are casual enough for chat, but still professional enough for the enterprise. So you'll see somebody writing an email, and there's several things it's picking up. First, it's picking up the context for the email you're composing so that it's learning that you're writing about office supplies and suggesting completions like ink and cartridges and paper, not chips and salsa. It learns your personal facts, like your address, and completes those so you don't have to make errors. We are bringing Smart Compose to G Suite customers, ramping up over the coming weeks. We studied grammar correction, and how do you correct grammar? And we decided to adopt a novel approach to grammar correction. With Google Translate, that takes text in a language like French and translates it to English. So we adopted the technology, and what we're doing is we're taking text in incorrect English and translating it to corrected English. What's nice about this machine learning approach is it's not brittle like rule-based approaches. Grammar correction is in, in Google Docs is available today in beta. Let's talk about meetings. Scheduling meetings in the old way is hellacious. What we do is just take the list of participants from you, and the rest happens magically. We find the right time slots, but we also find the right rooms in each location based on your historical patterns of which rooms you book, your proximity to your seat, and so on. I'm happy to tell you that we will be enabling voice commands for Google Meet hardware so that you can start a meeting with, hey, Google, start that meeting. And there's more to come. We'll be rolling this out to select Meet hardware customers over the fall. Today, I'm excited to announce that we're bringing our third generation TPUs to cloud, demonstrating our ongoing commitment to put the best hardware in the hands of AI developers. AutoML lets you extend our most powerful machine learning models to recognize data specific to your challenges without writing code. We're excited to announce today that AutoML Vision is going to public beta. Over 18,000 of you have already signed up to use it, and today, we're also announcing two new AutoML products, extending its capability to language. The first is AutoML Natural Language, which builds on the text analysis abilities of our Natural Language API. The second is AutoML Translation, which extends 
Google's machine learning language translation technology to recognize jargon, terms, and figures of speech of your application in 27 language pairs with more on the way. The best way to see how AutoML vision and natural language work is through live demos. In the AutoML Vision UI is where I gather and label all of the images that will be used to train my model. The best part about AutoML is that I don't need to write any of the model code to train this. I can simply press the train button to train my model. The most important part of this process is generating predictions on images our model hasn't seen before. Turns out these both belong to different species, and our model has predicted both varieties correctly with over 96% confidence. Working in a contact center requires, of, uh, requires some of our most uniquely known human skills, like navigating informal language, understanding context, and recognizing what some need, uh, someone needs from limited information. We call it contact center AI. Hello, Mala. I'm an automated agent. Welcome back to eBay. It looks like we just delivered you white Pamarka size six running shoes on June 25th. Are you calling about this order? Yeah, exactly. Okay, how can I help you with that order? Unfortunately, they don't fit, so I need to return them. I can help you with that. But now Mala needs another, better fitting pair of shoes. The virtual agent will detect this and will offer to connect Mala to a live agent. Josh, among all qualified agents, is the best matching fashion expert to help Mala at this moment. Mala's call is routed to Josh, including all previous contacts about Mala's order and her conversation with a virtual agent. We're happy to announce today that Contact Center AI is in alpha and open for signups. I think everybody is going to move to the cloud. Just know that we're here to partner with you, to help you disrupt in a non-disruptive way. Bye.